So you woke up this morning, took a look at your tank, and noticed that some of your fish have white spots on them. It's probably ick. Let's go talk about it. In this video, I'm going to cover three main points about ick, what it is, how did your fish get it, and what do you need to do about it. Basically, you need to know that there are four life cycles to this organism, and only one of those life cycles is actually susceptible to the medications that we use to treat these guys. It's basically just a pathogen that has somehow found its way into your aquarium by one means or another, and now it's preying on your fish to complete its life cycle and keep itself replicating to create more of itself. There are a lot of different symptoms that you can use to identify whether your fish has ick or not, but by far the most common is when people see white spots on the surface of the body of their fish. And here's a pro tip, if you can count the white spots on the fish, it's probably ick. If there are too many of them to count, it's probably velvet and not ick. Some of the other symptoms that your fish might be displaying to let you know that there's something going on is a loss of appetite or lethargy where they're just laying around and not out swimming like normal. Heavy breathing, you can see this in their mouth and in their gill flaps. They might be scratching at the rocks or the sand bed, and even in some cases, unfortunately, there is a sudden unaliving. So if you noticed any of these things in your fish and had to get into your tank in one way or another, and there's a lot of different ways that this can happen, but usually it's because it's transported in on some organism that you've put in the tank. Most commonly, another fish that was already infected with it when you got it from the store. But fish are not the only way it can get in. It can come in on invertebrates or coral frags if you have a reef tank. And in certain situations, if tanks are close enough together, it can even move through the air in one of its life cycles and go between tanks cross-contamination style through the air. So I'm sure at this point you probably paused the video and went to see if you could count the spots on your fish and you figured out that you could. So what do you need to do about it? There's basically five options that you have at this point. You can quarantine the fish in a quarantine setup. You could run the fish in a hyposaline environment where you drop the salinity down low. You could medicate it with chloroquine phosphate or copper, or you could do what's called the tank transfer method. All of these methods have their pros and cons, and some are easier than others and whatnot, but generally the method that most people go for is a quarantine system set up with a copper medication in the water and keeping that set up for a certain amount of time. And here's another pro tip for you. It's almost impossible to treat this in a tank that's running with corals and invertebrates in it. If you have a fish only tank, it is possible to treat the fish in the main display. But if you have a reef tank, you're gonna have to set up a quarantine system. So probably one of the best medications that you can get for this is called copper power. And you're also going to need a copper test kit to go along with that because the therapeutic range that you have to have the copper in has to be tested for. It's not something that you can eyeball just by putting a certain amount of drops into the water. When using this, you have to maintain a level of copper in the water at 2.5 parts per million or just slightly above that. Anything less than that and the timer starts over, anything more than that and you risk unaliving your fish. I've put links down in the description so it's easy for you to find these things and get them for yourselves. And when you're talking about time, how long are you gonna have to quarantine your fish in this copper medicated environment, you're going to have to do a medicated treatment for at least 30 days. That doesn't mean you can do it for 26 and it doesn't mean you have to go to 40. You have to medicate for 30 days and if it drops below that 2.5 parts per million of copper, that 30-day timer starts over completely from day one. After the 30-day medication period, you're going to take the medication out. There's a couple of different ways to do that, but the most common and easiest way is just to do a 100% water change on that water. And then you're going to observe the fish for two to four weeks in that quarantine environment before you put them back in the main display. This is called leaving the main display fallow where there's no fish in there. And while you're quarantining the fish, the life cycle of the ick in the main display is running its course and it's finally exhausting itself and they'll be gone in the display. And you're observing the fish in the QT when everything in there looks good. Everything can go back in the main display and you're good to go. So I've mentioned a quarantine setup a couple of times in this video, and there is a reason that you have to do that a certain way. And if you want to know what all those reasons are, that video right up there is going to give you all the information you need to do that properly. I'm going to see you over there. 